one of the traditional jobs of a geologist is to interpret the history of the Earth. To do this, we applied the axiom that states that the present is the key to interpreting the past. This means that we can interpret how ancient rocks formed in the past by looking at how they form today. Then if we see ancient rocks with the same characteristics as the rocks that we see today, then we can infer that they form by the same processes. So we can interpret what happened in the past based on what we know about what happens today. The present is the key to the past. A similar axiom helps us to interpret bodies in space for which most of our information is based largely on photographic images of the surface of planets and other solar system bodies. This axiom is that the Earth is the key to interpreting the planets. This is based on the assumption that elements of the planetary surfaces that we see in these images from space form by the same processes that form the same elements on Earth. For example, river channels form on Earth when water flows over the surface and erodes the substrate to form linear channels. These channels form very specific patterns of erosion on the Earth's surface. When we see similar linear patterns of erosion on the surface of other planets, we can infer that they form by flowing water over that surface, even if there's no water present on the planet today. In this module, we'll look at the processes and the landscapes that they produce on Earth so that we have a basis for interpreting those landscapes when we find them on other solar system bodies. We'll look at plate tectonics. This is a large-scale process that produces very large-scale elements of the Earth's surface, such as continents, mountain belts, and volcanoes. We'll look at water that produces a variety of landforms, including rivers. We'll look at the effects of wind that contributes to forming deserts and desert features like a variety of forms of sand dunes. We'll look at glaciers, which are flowing ice that sculpted much of the landscape of Canada and other countries in the Northern Hemisphere. And we'll also look at impact structures or craters that are formed when in objects from space collide with the Earth. And we'll end by applying all of this to interpret the surfaces of other planets within the solar system.